Hello, hello. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, just give me two more minutes. Just finishing up the setup here, and we're going to get started with some cool stuff today. All righty. All righty. All good to go. How's everyone going? Um, hi, Rene. Good to, good to have you here. Derek. Jesse. Awesome. Um, <clears throat> so today, and I thought we had something from last stream, but um, I realized we kind of like finished, or I, I covered pretty much everything I wanted to show you in the previous uh, stream with the with the technique of the the sci-fi suit. So I thought um, just do something completely different and something that is in line with a couple of things that are happening at the moment in the um, in my Discord server, which is a it's like an art contest, like a challenge for the month. Uh, but we started it a little bit later than usual, or not, you know, not at the beginning of the month anyway. So uh, we might give some extra time, like a, an, another week or something. So if you are interested in participating in a challenge, uh, an art challenge that is cool and interesting, we um, I'm going to show you a little bit of that as well. So I thought on, you know, today we can do something about something related to that challenge. Um, obviously in ZBrush, and I just want to cover a few techniques and a few processes that I think you might find useful, not just for the challenge. I mean, the theme would be the challenge, but um, yeah, you, you can find the, the techniques, I guess, useful for everything else. Um, and I'm going to touch on a couple of other things that um, we've been working through with the, with the students in the... Oh, by the way, anyway, I'll, <laughs> I'll show you later. But there is a new course in the 3D Concept Artist, like it's now available as a course. So it's it's called the asset library workshop where we create a bunch of assets like really cool high quality stuff to work um to develop stuff for your own projects so uh, i'm going to show you a couple of things as well in there um but yeah we'll talk about that later let me just bring in uh, a couple of things and i have the chat right next to me as well so if you have any questions or anything like that about what i'm showing or something unrelated <laughs> feel free to to ask around um loving the character the or character this month cool thanks mate um yeah so that's another thing <laughs> another project um this month we're working on a on an orc creature for the 3d snippets and that's going uh, really well i'm gonna have a a new update coming soon as well hey chris good to have you here all right so let's um Let's move this feature so that we actually do something. <laughs> um, I just want to show you the, the reference or the idea of what I'm talking about. So, I'm pretty sure you guys have seen the Rings of Power, the TV series from, uh, I think it's, yeah, from Prime Video that is coming next, uh, this, this September, apparently. So, these are some of the posters from that um, from that series, which I think they look really cool. So I'm excited about this. I'm you know, I'm into all these kind of like, um, you know, character designs and the costume designs and all of that. I think it's really really cool. So I'm excited to see this. Um, so I thought for the challenge we could do something similar, and it's a challenge in the Discord server. It's free to join and all of that. Uh, all you need to do is just be in the Discord channel so that you can participate. There are like some channels dedicated to that, and you know most if not all of the, the the 3d concept artist students and the extra mile students and all of them they're in there and they're like super helpful i mean just here there's a a, <laughs> a bunch of you guys so irene um james and chris all of you guys are you know part of the, the student cohort uh, but anyway so the point is the, this is the idea to create something like this obviously we're not we're not ripping off the rings of power like so blatantly so we're gonna do something a little bit different so we're doing something like this <laughs> um so we call it the swords of discord it's kind of like obviously based on on that related uh, to that uh, type of poster and the challenge is to create something like this meaning that you can create your own um you know like your your own creature or character um for the poster right for the swords of discord and 
the idea or the challenge that you face is that you need to represent or um yeah create the the essence of the character with the ge with the hands gestures uh, whatever prop you use uh so the idea is to have like swords but you can have like a hammer or you know something like dagger whatever you want um but the restriction is that you cannot show the face of the character or a lot of extra stuff so it's just focus on this type of composition which i think is like pretty cool um and is the challenge really to be able to portray the character without actually you know seeing the character just with some props and some um yeah the hand gestures and all of that so we're going to be doing that in discord uh this month and like i said there's going to be probably an, an extension uh, but yeah it's going to be pretty cool again it's it's just an art challenge free to join uh, there's some like cool prizes you can win um and this is uh, just to show you something that i did in zbrush is just a bunch of uh well eight hand gestures that they come ready to go like as a um, as a c tool so you can download as well that uh from the uh, i think it's in oh no it's in the anyway when you go into the <laughs> discord you'll see it in the in the um, in the art challenge so you can download these and you can use these as a starting point to essentially create the poses of your um, creature and you can change this uh, the topology is pretty decent so you can just subdivide it and detail it as much as you want um, some of these ones i actually use in here and i just tweak them a little bit i uh, can't remember which ones but yeah they're in here uh, so you can do the same thing uh, this is all done in zbrush and i rendered it in uh, maverick render uh, but yeah so again this is just to give you an idea of what the challenge is so for today what i thought um, we could do is work on a sword of some kinds a sword of some sorts <laughs> um i do have some references and uh, nothing particular just some some swords basically but i'm gonna make something up um, and i want to show you some really cool techniques that you can use to really quickly build um you know any type of props or any type of swords that um are kind of like in a similar in a similar setup i guess like with um, and i mean with symmetry and that sort of thing um and this is something else that we talked about in the um in the asset library workshop which is the the most recent workshop that we finished so it's now available as a course in the 3d concept artist and it's about like producing assets as you go as as you create stuff saving the different stages and optimizing your process so that at the end of like a single project you have a bunch of things that you can reuse um so yeah let's go ahead and start <laughs> and i'm gonna block in some ideas for the sword and then we can just you know convert it to anything we want all right so uh cancel sorry as uh, i have this sphere which it is just uh, this is not a dynamic sphere might as well just convert it into something useful all right so just a dynamic sphere 40 um a resolution of 40 and i'm just going to go ahead and block in the main structure of this sword so i'm going to append obviously well, not obviously. I guess you can do anything. Really. <laughs> um, I'm just going to append a Q. Get out of solo mode so that we can see both. Uh, and these would be... I don't know the anatomy of a sword. So I don't know exactly what the names are. This is the, the thing above the handle. <laughs> so it's going to be like that. Again, we can play around with the proportions and all of that, but I'm going to do it super basic, like start with something really, really simple, and then we add complexity to it. Um, let's go ahead and duplicate that. And this is going to be the actual handle of the sword. Oh, actually, the handle could be um, cylinder, so let's make the sword. Uh, something I, I would like to do in this case, just to show you something, it's not even a tip or anything, just something simple to, to work faster, um, is to hold, uh, hold control to access the control, uh, sorry, the masking brushes, mask, let's say this top area, invert the mask, and center that pivot to the unmask areas. That way I know that pivot is right in that plane, 
Uh, and that's pretty useful for this in this scenario because I can then just move it here and then I can control the height here so I don't have to, again, it's not like a big deal, but <laughs> yeah, I thought I'd show you um, how easy it is to set these things up. Um, and you can do the same thing with any other um, props or any other um, objects. So that's pretty, pretty simple. Let's go ahead and append a cylinder now. And this is going to be the handle. Uh, I can do the same thing, but let's do it in the opposite direction. Right, and then I can scale it like so. I think I might need to do it a little bit thicker than that. All right, and perhaps just push this up a bit. I mean, that sphere is just a reference for just having something at the bottom. And there we go. I mean, <laughs> this is like the most basic of blockouts, but it is a good start. Um, what I like about this super simple setup with just primitives and I haven't actually tweaked the, the shapes too much. It's just li literally stretching and scaling things with the gizmo. But what is really important about this is that you can very quickly have an understanding of like the, the proportions and the size and all of that. So obviously if I want to do something more realistic, right, I could just take this and, not that one, sorry, <laughs> this one and scale it like so. And then it will be kind of like a more realistic uh, sword, I suppose, um, but just playing around with this, the width of this, it just becomes like more fantasy, you know, like extreme, like thick um, blade, and that you know, and, and that immediately puts you into a into a different context, I, I guess. Um, and that's the cool thing about doing this simple block of before you get into thinking about details. Uh, you know, I already have ideas. And I really want to get into the details and just do these ornaments and stuff like that. But that comes next. So the first thing is just to set up your your blocking and or your your, um, your proportions, your main uh, silhouette. And then if that works, you're good to go. So uh, another thing you can do as well is to enable thumbnail. Uh, I'm going to, if you don't know what this is, by the way, um, in the preference palette, you can open up the thumbnail palette. This one right here and just enable that. Um, so what I like to do with the um, with this thumbnail, I never use it the way that is set by default like this. I actually take the background and I select a black color. So you can click on background and drag to a black color. And because ZBrush interprets black as transparent, it automatically changes this as transparent. So I can push and move my object behind it and you see <laughs> well, it's moving with it, but um, you can see through it. Um, and the cool thing about this as well is if you use your pen or your mouse and you click on the actual silhouette or somewhere around this area and you click and drag, you can actually scale that thumbnail. You can do it as well from the preference palette. Just uh, change the size and the magnify just go <laughs> a bit more, a bit much, but let's just leave it at one and then you can play with the size, right? Uh, but that's the same thing. I think it's just easy if you just click and drag and set it yourself. But the, the cool thing with that obviously is that as you move and rotate things around, you can maintain an eye on the proportions and the size. So designing in 3D, um, when you do characters and creatures, this is kind of like a must, uh, at least for me, just to keep an eye on proportions and size. Um, and for instance, if you're working on a creature or something for a, for a game uh, that's gonna end up in a, in a mobile device, right? that is crucial so that you can read the silhouette properly. So you can be doing, you know, you can be adding all these details and making all this really cool stuff. But if at the end it's going to be in a, in a tiny screen, you need to make sure that it reads well, it, it reads well and it, it under like the, the viewer understands what it is really. So having this little thumbnail here is like crucial to yeah be able to play with that. Um, all right. So let's go ahead and set this up in a folder. So I'm going to click on new folder. I'm going to call it OR as usual. And let's just drop everything in there. All right. So now that we have this, I'm going to click on the gear icon. Um, and I'm going to merge folder or I can, uh, we can duplicate a bit. I'm just going to merge it down. So now we have this piece. Obviously we can do auto groups because all of them are separate. Right, um, and then we can go ahead and start playing around with some ideas. So 
the first thing I want to do is split this again. Again, you could have done the duplicate, but let's do it simple. Um, split, split to similar, uh, split to, uh, sorry, group split. <laughs> if you click here, click OK, it's going to split everything back again. Um, so I think that's just easier than creating a new duplicate of folder and take them out and, and all of that. But anyway, it's just like an exact duplicate of what we had. Uh, but I, as always, I like to keep those separate. So with that in mind, now let's take everything or every piece. I'm going to turn off, turn on polyframe, sorry. Um, I'm going to take every piece and I'm going to dynamesh it. But I'm going to find a, a decent, oh, you know what, sorry, something that I should have done before um, before merging and splitting things is to unify it so that we can work with a more decent resolution and the and the brushes size actually work. So right now I'm using the move brush and this is actually an, an interesting tip. So um, if I go all the way to the maximum size, which is a thousand, this is how big it, you know, uh, series allows me to be with this brush. Now you can change that from the preferences, but ideally you want to maintain whatever you're working on within um, Zbrush ideal dimension, so two by two by two. So if I go ahead and click on Unify, for instance, um, let's do it with the with the blade, so it's more obvious. If I click Unify, Zbrush is going to scale it down, and this is the actual size. Now, hopefully, you can see that there. But that obviously changes the placement of the rest of the stuff. So I'm gonna undo that. So there's a couple of things you can do. Like again, you can merge everything together, unified everything so that it's in the right scale that Zbrush uh, prefers. Uh, or something that I also like to do in this case that is really easy. And if you have a character with lots of subtools, it's kind of like annoying to, or if you have subdivision levels, it's kind of annoying to do. So you can go to C plugin, you can go to transpose master, here we go. Click on T pose to mesh. So Zbrush is going to grab whatever you have visible, send it to a single subtool, kind of like merging together. So here I can just click on unify and it's going to unify this whole thing. It's the equivalent of you scaling things down and uh, scaling things down or moving things like if you were uh, posing a character. But I just change the size and then click on T pose to see, uh, to subtool. And there we go. So now Zbrush brought everything back into different subtools and now I have the ability to you use the, the large brushes to do this type of stuff, right? Um, so again, a couple of tiny tips there. Um, if you don't want to do that, or for whatever reason, you don't, you, f you feel like it might break <laughs> or something, you can also just change the, the settings of the brushes. So if you go to preference and go to draw, you have this max size brush size set to a thousand and the dynamic brush set to one. So you can change this to be, 50,000 or 5,000 and this one to be 50. So if you go like to the maximum numbers, now you can just increase the brush size like quite a bit, right? Um, so yeah, that's another way of doing it. Let's go back to the defaults, 1,001. Okay, so <laughs> now let's go ahead and activate symmetry. Let's Dynamesh, and now with 128, we have a much more decent um, topology, at, at least resolution, right? Let's do the same thing in here. Dynamesh, maybe a bit more than that. And the same thing here, a bit more than that. Cool, so we have now four, uh, four Dynamesh objects. Um, because this is such a simple object, you could start, if you have a very clear idea, and if you have like, let's say a 2D concept or something that you're actually following, you can start with a clean mesh from the beginning but I'm, I'm just gonna explore shapes. So that's why Dynamesh is, you know, is the idea here. All right, so first I just wanna play around with some shapes for the blade. Um, so what, I do, what I'll do is I'm gonna bring in the gizmo, centered, uh, centered without symmetry. So that is right in the middle. And we can bring in some deformers. So I can just click on the gear icon. I can use the taper deformer, for instance, and obviously, this is the one that kind of like give it the, the shape of a sword. But now this specific shape becomes kind of like a dagger. It's not that cool anymore. Or I can go like this and do something weird, right? And then you can choose the, uh, with the white cone, you can do this, right? That's kind of cool. 
like that. And yeah, now I'm thinking that this that this might be an, an interesting <laughs> an interesting shape. Um, or you can just go the opposite, right? You can go like that, and then just control the 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 profile of that tapering with the with the white cone. All right, so this is um, a bit typical. Mm. Let's see, I'm gonna cancel this, so I'm gonna reset this, and I'm gonna duplicate it because I just got an idea. <laughs> so I'm gonna duplicate this one, uh, give it a different polygroup, so we have two of the same living in the same space. I'm gonna take the blue one, and I'm gonna give it this taper effect that I showed you before. Like that, accept, and then I'm gonna take the blue one. Uh, sorry, the um, pink one, and I'm gonna scale it in the Z axis a bit, and in the X axis a bit, to make kind of like another piece in the center. I don't know if this is gonna look good, but we'll see. Scale that, and let's use the taper this time. All right, so something different, but I'm not sure if I like it. We have two. <laughs> if anything, we have this option, or we have this option. It's a bit cleaner. All right, uh, or we can do another one. So since I already kind of like changed the two blockings that I had, uh, I can duplicate one just to keep this one. Again, these are just experimenting with ideas. Um, I'm going to take the previous one that has all the undo history. So when you duplicate a subtool, it just, it has like, um, the, the subdivision, sorry, the undo history has a new start. So duplicating this one will give me a brand new uh, subtool or like a duplicate of the subtool, but it has a brand new history. So I cannot go back. So that's why I duplicated to keep the shape, but I can go back to this one and just go back to what I had by doing this. Okay. So. I can do that the same thing and just duplicate and keep trying ideas. So I'm going to duplicate one more time, select this one, and maybe this time what I can do is show you something else that is pretty cool. So I'm going to use the project primitive instead. And the project primitive, what it does is like the king of the deformers. And it just uses a mathematical function to describe a shape or a volume, in this case, like a sphere. And then you can move this around and it just distorts, you know, whatever mesh you have. And then you can scale that, you know, play around with those. Um, so I'm gonna use this to alter the, the shape of the sword. Um, and you can use this pink one, this pink modifier or pink controller. This is the blend and this other pink one, which is the opacity, which are slightly different. So I'm gonna click and change that, play around with that and the opacity as well. And then I can just actually change the sphere Like so. Um, I'm not too worried about the, you know, the bulging here on the sides or on the front and the back. I'm actually just looking at the silhouette that I have here on, on the left and see if I find something that looks interesting in terms of the proportions. Um, and if you want to maintain kind of like a flat area, you can also take these white points from this angle and I have perspective of if you push this in it's kind of like flattening this whole thing and if you press the shift key it does it on both sides so you can just revert back to this sort of flat area um, if you are losing resolution here you can also control the tessellation with this controller or this cone here the light green uh, yeah it's like a light green so you can just push this and anything that is outside of the original boundaries of that cube that we had, essentially what, what the um, primitive is distorting is going to be, um, it was going to have more resolution really, because that's what we're doing. We're adding resolution to the areas, the, to the new areas or to the new volumes that we didn't have. So you, you kind of like see that uh, Sirius is maintaining the original 
cube there, but it's adding resolution all around it. So that's cool. Um, I think that works. Let's click on accept. So that's another cool way of um, generating an interesting shape for our sword. Now, if we want, we can increase the resolution a bit of the Dynamesh and Redynamesh so that we have something a bit cleaner and use something like Polish just to polish everything. Um, I'm going to enable Symmetry and with the Move Brush the, and the Accu Curve, I just want to polish kind of like this tapering effect a bit more. And I'm not to worry about this shape. This this is going to change in, in just a second. I just want to, you know, looking at the thumbnail, see what uh, could be an interesting <laughs> shape. All right. Um, cool. Cool. Glad you like it. Hey, Jeremy. Good to have you here. Thanks for stopping by. Um. Okay. So. What I'll do with this, I think maybe uh, it would be interesting to have like some kind of like splitting section or just do something a bit more interesting. So again, I can duplicate to keep all these options with me and those options I can then turn into different swords, right? Or, or, or different bases to then create more swords. Um, and that's kind of like one of, the, one of the processes that we use in the asset library workshop where you build things and you keep the originals in a way and you optimize the originals so that you have more options. So now I could, if you want, if I want, I can just generate a bunch of bases for a bunch of different sorts. So I'm going to take this one. Um, I'm going to use the knife cut, obviously, uh, the knife cut curve, sorry, the knife curve. And this works with symmetry. And I'm going to go into solo really quickly. I'm going to go like this. Oops, sorry. You know, one thing we can do here is lock the camera so that we don't move it accidentally. Hold Control and Shift, and that's gonna cut in the side that has the shaded line. Is gonna cut that off, um, and you can press the Alt key, and that creates points for a Bezier curve. And that sharpens that that line a little bit. And I'm gonna do the same thing here for the for the bottom. Think something like that or something like this. Let's see. Mm. Yeah, could be cool. Um, and then we can use something like the knife lasso to do the same thing, but just do something a bit more interesting. Like that. I'm going to try to find an interesting shape. You know what? I think I have an idea. I'm going to I'm going to append a sphere and I'm going to use the booleans with this sphere to just cut something um in the middle so it's kind of like a split I don't know if this is going to work, but um, it's kind of like a split um, sword. So I'm going to cut with the knife uh, the knife curve. I'm going to cut this sphere mirror and weld so that's like this. But you know, this is still a sphere, kind of. <laughs> um, and I'm going to enable live booleans and I'm going to turn this. Let's put this up in here. And I'm going to make it subtracting, or I'm going to make it subtract. So I can do that sort of stuff. Again, I, I don't usually design swords, so <laughs> this is just a lot of playing around with um, for interesting shapes. All right. I think this might be interesting. We'll see. Um, and we can also use with the with the gear icon selected on the object that is subtracting that piece in the middle, we can also add a project primitive that's gonna do this. And I'm just gonna push this in here. 
and we can add a new one. So there's another controller. This might look a little bit overwhelming and crazy, but once you get used to the different controllers, uh, this is by far one of the most powerful deformers in ZBrush. Um, actually, in the ZBrush Guides website, I have a full uh, guide or like um, it, it's like a tutorial, but it's more like a reference with everything that this controller does. So it's called the primitive, the project primitive deformer. So if you look for that, um, you'll find something that gives you an idea of what everything else, all the controllers. Uh, so yeah, there's one called this one right here. The purple one is called new surface. So that allows you to lock in, let's say in this case, this circle here, but I can do this and then I have another, whoops, not, not new surface then, uh, sorry, accept. The new surface is just going to add something on top of what you have. The white one, this white cone here, if you click on it, it's going to accept that change so that you can then push this down and have another one. Right, so you can have that sort of stuff. Um, I'm going to push this here. And I think I'm just going to scale. Something like that. Yeah. I mean, this is going to be like a fantasy sword. So maybe like the, the final, like the tip of it or the inside is kind of like filled with magic. <laughs> and then there's going to be something in there. Um, so I'm going to click OK. Right. Um, so this is still a just a little piece that defines that or like that defines that um, intersection. So I can use the move brush with symmetry and adjust anything that I want. So I can push this closer together if I wanted to. I can use the inflate, uh, sorry, the pinch, for instance, you know, to get this closer together. But I think I kind of like the, the spacing. I don't, I don't want to make them too close because then dynameshing with, you know, my might change it. Um, all right, so I think that's cool. Let's go ahead and take the actual mesh, this one, and just adjust it a bit. All right, and just to make it more interesting, we can use and do um, use the knife lasso and do what we were doing before. So now that I have this reference in the middle, I can sort of follow. A similar flow, I guess. All right, this is where the design <laughs> starts to maybe break. Um, yeah, something like this. I'm gonna keep it simple. I'm not gonna overdo it, although I've already, you know. As a as a blade, it's already pretty intense. Okay, something like that. So that's cool. Um, so now what I can do is if I, again in the same um, the same idea um, as I just mentioned about like taking everything and keep track of what you're building. Again, that's the essence of the asset library workshop. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the blade, uh, that's not the blade, the blade. I'm going to click on new folder and I'm going to call it uh, crazy blade. And I'm going to put in the boolean there as well. So now I have the boolean um, and the blade in one folder. I can push this up as well and I can click on the gear icon and click on um, boolean folder and that is going to produce a single mesh with all of that I can you know leave this one or keep this one as the originals hidden click on that one and this is my actual blade with all the polygroups so at this point if you want to just maintain things clean and, and all of that I haven't done you know the actual blade this is not going to cut through anything 
notes. <laughs> but um, if you want, you could just go ahead and do that. And let's say take, uh, let's go with, I don't know, 7,000 or 5,000 polygons, keep groups, uh, don't smooth anything, try to det detect edges and click on zero measure. Oops, let's cancel symmetry. And because we have polygroups essentially everywhere that we sort of cut through with the model, we have a pretty decent topology. Um, so let's actually do that just so you know how to do it in case you want to do it. Uh, but I'm going to continue with Dynamics. So let's duplicate that again, <laughs> another version. Uh, this one, I'm going to go ahead and assign similar polygroups in here. So hold Control and Shift, select those ones. Control W, so it's the same polygroup here. The same polygroup here. I'll do the same thing here. Same polygroup here. So all of these ones are the same polygroup. All of these ones as well. Um, and the idea is that Sirius is going to look at the difference between the polygroups, and that's where it's going to try to create um, the loops, basically. So let's try that again, maybe with 4,000. See, remeasure. And you see it's a pretty decent topology already. Obviously, you know, you can clean things up. Uh, so in this case, we can use the polish by features. That's going to maintain the, the sharpness of everything. Uh, it's going to look at the difference between polygroups. And that is for you guys in the deformation palette. So uh, polish by features. So that's what I'm doing in here. And we can go ahead and maybe target less polygons. There we go. So that's a pretty clean object. I mean, the other side, the back side is not as clean at this side, but this one is pretty good. So I can do the same thing. I can just go polish by features like that. Um, and if I want to kind of like mirror that to the other side, I can use the mirror and weld from the geometry. I have it here on my UI. Uh, so if you have my UI, if you downloaded that one, you can also, you know, get it from there. Um, so, you know, you can use the same thing that I'm using, but in the geometry palette, you can go to modify topology and here in the mirror and, and weld, we have these tiny little, um, letters for X, Y, Z, and then you can mirror in different axes. So if I enable flow, you see the axis that I actually need to mirror and weld would be the Z axis. Yeah, the blue one. <laughs> so I'm going to click on Z and then click on the X. So you see, I just enabled that tiny little uh, Z there. I can click on mirror and well, and I just mirrored the wrong one. <laughs> so that's, this is the, the other one that I don't want to mirror. So before I do that, I need to go to the mirror and do the same thing. So I can mirror this. So now the, the back is in the front and the front is in the back. And now I can take this one and mirror it in Z. There we go. So now both sides are the same. So that's kind of cool. Let's turn that off or back to what it was. Um, and just for the sake of, you know, it should be the same, but just to make sure that everything on both sides is the same, I'm going to do a mirror and weld again. Uh, I'm going to use the one here now on the X axis. So both sides, both sides are the same. Um, now, if you want to obviously do the blade, uh, we can use the C modeler, for instance. And we can say, you know, let's let's delete this entire loop. So I'm right clicking on the edge, selecting delete, target, edge loop complete. And that's it. So I just deleted that. Um, and then we can use, let's go back to the move brush. We can use the keys move, but wanna hold control and shift to mask this entire blade except the outside maybe hang on let's do it again hold control and shift to isolate this bit invert hold control and shift to isolate that bit invert mask bring back everything so now i essentially mask everything but the the edge and then using the gizmo we can just in theory uh, maybe i don't have enough geometry it should be Hang on, let me do it again. 
So hide whatever I don't need, mask it, bring everything. There we go. All right. So now we have the unmask. Uh, we have the yeah. We need probably more. Mm. I'm gonna do it the opposite. So what's happening here <laughs> is that <clears throat> when we mask all these edges, all the the part that we don't want to move, we're actually masking all the edges, so we cannot move it, um, which is yeah, pretty silly. Um, so <laughs> what I'll do is I'm gonna scale this like that. So this is gonna give me the actual thickness of the of the sharpness of that blade, which is fine. Um, we can also mask this entire loop. And this is a pretty cool thing you can do with the C modeler, really useful thing. So you can right click on an edge and you can select the masking option and select edge loop complete. So it is the same thing as, you know, deleting or selecting edge loops, but this time it's going to just mask it. So if I click on that, now I've, I've masked that entire loop, right? I can invert that. And from this angle, so you can see what I'm doing, I'm gonna use the inflate to just push it out. Right. So now we have that really sharp edge. Hopefully you can see it. And then we can invert that. Right. And then we can bring back the gizmo and do something like that. All right. Uh, the next cool thing that we can do with this, let's say, somehow clean topology is to let's center that or sorry center that there uh, i'm gonna click on the gear uh, sorry yeah gear icon and go to taper so this is the same thing that we did before oops let's reset that clear the mask we don't want that Alrighty. so now yeah it's the same thing that we did before so we can tweak that a bit more um so what i want to do is i want to taper this whole thing so that is not um, like it's sharper, obviously, towards the tip of the of the blade. So I can I can do that, like around there, and we can use this white cone to tweak it. I don't know if it's it's a little bit hard to see, but I'll zoom in. So you see, it's there's a nice tapering effect towards the tip. The problem is that if I go ahead and rotate around, it is also tapering this whole thing, and I think I still have. Oh, hang on. Still have the. Oh, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. I'm gonna accept that. Clear my mask so there's no mask. All right, there's no mask anymore. Taper. All right, so it's good, good to go. So there was a there was a mask in there. Okay, so the problem now is that this is being tapered nicely from this angle, but in here it's sort of like crunching it all together. Um, it's not too bad, I think <laughs> it actually looks cool, but if you don't want to do that, I think this is this looks cool, but mm. <laughs> this is the problem when you're designing things. Like sometimes you make a, a little mistake and you see uh, another option that looks better, and then you just <laughs> you just stick with that. But yeah, let's try to stick with what I was originally saying. So if you don't want to affect that, in other words, you want to have the tapering on this side, like on the yeah on the side of the of the blade, but not in the front. You can restrict it by using these cones in here. So it's kind of like an opacity on the different axes. So in the x axis, which is the one that is sort of pulling the the tip of the of the blade in, you can reduce that. So now you have exactly what you had before, but they're still tapering on the z axis, right? And you can ex exaggerate this a little bit more, so you can see, right? So I can still do that tapering on just this axis and not affecting the uh, the front, which is, you know, the idea. So yeah, so you can do that. Um, maybe if you want to thicken up this, the you know, the root of this blade, we can do that. Click accept. All right. So again, this is a pretty decent topology already with just 
very little work. Um, you could definitely optimize this even more, but it's um, you know, it's pretty cool. So I'm gonna do a quick save. Um, and keep this there for the time being. Maybe I'm gonna enable symmetry, and I'm gonna enable symmetry in the x and the z axis. So that way, I'll show you what I mean with that. If I move something, obviously, in here, let's let's say this point this way, I'm moving it in the in both sides in the x axis, but also at the back on the z axis. So that's that's pretty handy. So that we, you know, we maintain this uh, this edge. So with that, I'm gonna actually use the move topological with AccuCurve, and I'm just gonna adjust and sharpen up this. Let's give it a bit more of a of a curve. And the cool thing is that we still have the polygroup, so we can, if we want, just do uh, polish by features again, just to clean this this line and then scale that uh, that edge again. But I think it's it's fine as it is. All right, I'm getting a little bit into you know too many details right now and I still want to make this a lot more interesting than what we have but it's a good start alrighty so that's roughly the base of the blade uh, we can you know since we have topology we can do uh, some other interesting details on top of it and you know have fun with, with the blades and, and detailing the blades and all of that but we'll get to that in a second of course we need to also work on this because this looks pretty boring to me right now uh, so I don't know if there's any questions or anything so far let me just have a look at the chat um, uh, have you seen the show Forge on Forge in Fire uh, lots of information about metal weapons uh, no but that's actually quite interesting I'm gonna have a look at that Forge in Fire yep that's a good resource. Excellent. Yeah, maybe if you want to share that in the in the channel, in the Discord channel, that'll be good. That's a good idea. Uh, tutoriales en español. I I do every now and again. I actually went in. Um, so the the Crad Fest is um, is like a Spanish for Spanish speakers basically um, in Colombia, and um, that's run by Andres Mensa, and he. He does like he invites lots of artists, and it's kind of like a, a really nice online event. So I was doing a demo. I did it two days ago, three days ago, um, and I'm gonna be doing something else this coming week. Um, so if you if you're interested in in like really 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 good content in Spanish, uh, check that out as well, um, and you might find it useful. Um, I think yesterday or t today, early in the morning, uh, Danielle Bell was there as well. Um, so yeah, worth checking it out. But I do I do um, tutorials in Spanish. It's just not not very often. <laughs> um, all right. Does the Scale Master plugin have one click zero scale unify button that will scale all the subtools at once? Um, that's kind of like what I just yeah what I just explained. The the button is just putting everything into this uh, transpose master and then unified everything. I think there might be even something in the subtool master. I just don't use that uh, for this purpose. Let me just check. No. No, I cannot see anything. Uh, to be honest, that's the the quickest way is just to do that. Um, but there might be other ways of doing it. I j this is just how I do it. Um, how could you create the cloth that carries the handle of the samurai sword? The cloth. You mean, um, the one that carries the samurai sword? You mean the wrap around the handle, or, or what exactly? Yeah, 
um, it, I'm not sure what you what you mean. But if, if you if you give me like an example, <laughs> I, I might try to give you an idea. All right, let's go ahead and take this cube, and I'm gonna duplicate it. Turn it off. Select that and use the symmetry again. I want to try to use both symmetries, so X Z, so that we can do like cool things like this, and it's in both sides. Um, and because this is just a dynamic object, we can play around with it and try to find something interesting. So I'm gonna try to um, looking at the at the silhouette silhouette here. I'm gonna try to do kind of like balance out these these arcs and these flows, these very organic lines I have with something here. But, you know, it has to be a... I would assume it has to be like a thick handle, in a way, just for the, the amount of weight that this blade is probably... Again, mostly is going to be held by fantasy magic, so <laughs> I don't care. Um, in fact, that's something cool that we can do. And then here, there will be like a crystal that powers the magic and makes it lighter or whatever. <laughs> but if it was like a real thing, it's just, you know, maybe too big. All right. Um, if you don't want to use the Z and X axis because there's gonna be you will see when I turn around there's gonna be like a bit of an indentation Let me just show you what I mean So this indentation if you want to avoid that you can totally do that I don't really mind because again, I'll, I'll tweak this later um, a bit more But if you don't want to have this type of thing what another tool you can use instead of using the uh, Z uh, as another symmetry is to use the depth um, I think it's called depth. Let me just see <laughs> I don't use that often, uh, but in a specific cases like this, it it would be really helpful. So if you go to brush palette, let's drop that here on the left-hand side, and you go to depth, there is this thing called infinite depth, right? And by default, it's set to Z, So, but looking at the camera right now, this is our axis. So if I enable this, and let's turn off the Z symmetry here, whatever I select, whatever point I select, is going to kind of like grab it as a as a needle or as a tube in the infinite depth, right? <laughs> and whatever is in that imaginary tube is going to be able to, uh, or we're gonna be able to move the entire thing that is attached to the tube. I don't know if that makes sense, but um, let me actually bring this in because it's, it's a pretty powerful tool for these type of things. Uh, and I'll see if that makes sense. Um, so basically, So this is the Z axis, right? That's the Z axis. So when I enable this in Z, that little tiny text there, um, Zero is going to look at whatever we select. Let's say we use um, our brush and click here, right? Zero is going to use that infinite depth and say, hey, whatever, whatever is in this point in that, Access anything that is in there. We're gonna grab it at the same time. So that's what I'm saying. It's kind of like a needle or like a tube So it's like like <laughs> let's say they I don't know if this is an uh, it's gonna be helpful for you guys, but let's say Yeah, let's say the size of the brush is this Right what I imagine or how I think about this feature is like this is the size of my tube that I kind of like see through um, and then series gonna grab that <laughs> like that and whatever is within the range of that imaginary tube you will be able to take it and move it at the same time um in the same in the same way so i don't know if that makes sense this is how i just think about <laughs> this feature but to give you an example is this is my the tube size that i have if i do this um let's do it with there's not there's not much resolution actually but if I do that, it's not gonna work. See, because I I don't have I should have done it from the from the beginning, but um, yeah, this is basically what it does. I'm gonna use it in here, infinite depth. I'm gonna click here and then push like so, so it does it automatically in the entire infinite depth. Yeah, 
Hopefully that makes sense. I'm gonna turn it off. I don't need it right now because I already started with the the X and Z symmetry, which is fine. Um, let's enable Polyframe. See how much we're distorting this. We can increase the resolution a bit and redynamish. Maybe polish by features a bit. Um, but we get in there. I think we're we're getting closer to something interesting. Um, I think I'm gonna keep this relatively simple and clean, and then um, use a bunch of ornaments and stuff to to make it more more interesting. All right, and I think we can play around with. You know, not just focusing, because I've been basically designing and building it all from the front. Um, but now we can, you know, start playing around with some ideas to add more volume, not just in the front. So, for example, this bit. Again, just looking at the at the silhouette that I have on my left hand side. All right, cool. I'm gonna add a bit more resolution, redynamish the whole thing, or maybe a bit more. Um, and I think that's that's looking good. We can definitely polish <laughs> that a bit more, but from the distance. It's not too bad. It's an interesting sword. Oh, yeah, some kind of sword. Um, I feel we can do a couple more things. Like now that I have like an idea in mind of what this could end up looking, I'm just gonna block that out and then uh, come back. Um, costura de tela para el Ah, okay. So el renderman. So I think what you, yeah, what you're talking about is the the wrap around the handle. So how you go about doing something like that. Um, it really depends on the the end result. I would personally just sculpt it and and just like, yeah, I'll show you some some techniques. But you can totally do that with geometry if you wanted to. Um, I, I can show you that. Maybe do something like this for this handle. It would be yeah, do some kind of wraps. That would be cool. Uh, we still we still have plenty of time, so yeah, we can do that. Um, all right. So yeah, let let me just block this other idea I have. So I'm gonna duplicate the sphere, and that's gonna be my crystal. My yeah, <laughs> I don't know the, the the magic bit. It would be in here. So it'll be some kind of crystal that you know very quickly. Let me just into solo mode and smash this cut it up into a little crystal shape there we go so nothing fancy just Just a little um, crystal, stylized crystal shape type of type of thing. We could also taper it a bit. Both sides. All right, <laughs> that's that's the some some crystal power in the whole thing, um, and there could be some energy in the middle, and then the tip is being formed by energy. Um, <laughs> you you won't see it, but you can imagine it. It's just actually let let me let me see if I can show you what I mean, um, and that way you understand the the design <laughs> of this sword. Right. So imagine, let's say maybe this is like a dark, corrupted power. So it's gonna be red. 
four inch. Um, <laughs> all right, so here is my, you know, my crystal. Oops, put in a different layer. So this is my crystal. Right, and then there's gonna be some power through the middle here, so it's gonna be concentrated power, and then this is going to form the end of the sword. But it's gonna be all like magic thing. <laughs> so it's kind of like um like a lightsaber mixed with a fantasy. Yeah. That's what it is. Uh, yeah, that's what I was planning to do from the beginning. Trust me. Um, so <laughs> that's, the, that's why this is the design of the sword. All right, so let's go back to this bit. Um, since I have already blocked the rest. Uh, and let's clean this up a little bit, just to, so you know how I would go about cleaning something like that already. Uh, and then we go into the handle and maybe, you know, maybe we can duplicate the crystal or something, do something here. Um, I don't know exactly what to do yet, but it'll be something interesting. Um, alrighty, so I think one, another thing that I want to do with the blocking, just looking at, at the entire thing, I just want to scale everything a bit more. So I'm just going to go to this point, right? Just holding the Alt key, just to move the point or the the pivot, sorry, uh, or the point of the pivot, I'm gonna click on these pizza icons, <laughs> which is like selecting all the sub tools, and you can actually tell ZBrush not to move everything. So I don't want to affect the, uh, the the sphere here at the top. So I'm gonna hold Control and Shift and hold the Alt key just with the selection tools to hide it and or not hide it, but just telling ZBrush that once we have this icon enabled, anything with these hatch lines is not gonna be moved. So I can actually, you know, push it and put it here and then scale this in the in the Y axis if I wanted to, right? So that's one thing I want to do, but again, I want to do it from here and I don't want to move or change this portion as well. And maybe the handle either. So I just want to scale this whole thing a bit. Um, yeah, I think just a tiny bit, um, and also, same thing with this. I'm gonna hide all of these bits, or not hide, unselect them, um, and then this one as well. I'm just gonna scale this, this tube up, and now I can select the sphere. So I'm just moving things around, really, not nothing crazy here um, just because I thought you know because of the size of the of the sword maybe the handle needs to be a, a bit longer so that there's like whatever character or creature uses can handle it with like two hands um, just because of the weight uh, I'm and I'm thinking I'm not liking this this shape I think it should be should be narrower here but again it's all about tweaking things especially when you're designing directly in 3D. You know what, I'm just gonna push this even further, right? And then use the, giz the, the knife lasso with the Z off, and I'm just gonna cut, oops, the other way around. Something like that. So it's a bit sharper. So now we have, um, well, I redynamized it before we had also polygroups. Um, so we could do the same thing we did with the previous one. Um, let's go ahead and do something else just to show you another technique. You don't have to use the the cut, uh, the knife brush or the knife curve. Um, you could actually use the slice curve, which I also have here. All of these brushes are under the control and shift. You can click and select them here so this 
um, this slice curve is pretty good so you can do things like this so I can slice through here I'm pressing alt as I go through this to slice through the model it's not going to change anything so I can focus on these pieces right I slice through that um, maybe we'll clean it up in a second and then something for this area as well uh, this one doesn't work with symmetry even though I have that enabled I'm focusing on one side only so that's pretty cool what I'll do is with the select last uh, select rectangular piece I'm gonna isolate let's say this bit and then group that so it's like a single polygroup and maybe that bit as well so make sure that these areas are as clean as we can possibly have them one polygroup for this whole area um, and I think this might cause an issue here so I'm just gonna cut it out like that and then assign this to a same polygroup there we go I think that works um, the rest works maybe this one is a single polygroup all right uh, so all I did really, if I turn off the line and you kind of like avoid looking at the weird topology from Dynamesh, we have different colors or different polygroups for the different areas that we want to maintain um, with clean loops around. Uh, on top of this, what we can do as well is with the slice curve, I'm going to hold Control and Shift to isolate the pink one, right? So it's like this bit. Uh, and I'm also going to cut through here. And that's going to give me a nice loop in here and the same in here and maybe the same here and the same here um, like that right so all these different pieces are going to help ideally are going to help the the siri mesha to to do its thing let's bring back everything um and i'm going to mirror and mirror and weld oops just mirror and weld then <laughs> sorry so now I think we're looking at it from the wrong angle. Here we go. So now this should be, in theory, an easier mesh for the serial mesh to, to remesh. But again, I'm going to duplicate it. Hide the original. Take this one. Again, this is still a Dynamesh object. Um, it's kind of like a bad Batman sign. <laughs> we'll fix it. Um, and then I'm going to target maybe 2,000 polygons. Click on serial mesh. Oops, let's go back. I mean, it did a pretty good job, right? But we wanna we wanna guide it a little bit. So let's undo that. Keep groups. Uh, I'm gonna keep the smooth groups on. Let's see. Um, I think it would be fine if we leave it off. But let's just try both. And det detect edges. There we go. Um, I'm gonna use polish by groups. Uh, by feature, sorry, just to clean things up a bit. Run a couple more times, and I think this is a pretty decent topology actually for what we had. Excellent. Um, there's some things here that I can change, right? Like this bit here, but it is fine on this side. So I can do the same thing, just mirror and weld on the z-axis. Whoops. Let's do the same thing we did before: mirror on the z-axis, and then mirror and weld on the z-axis, and that way we have a um, much nicer topology you know there's something something going on here that we can also fix uh, but overall I think it's it's looking pretty decent yeah so there's some tiny things that we can fix um, let's do mirror and weld on the z-axis again yeah so um, we can fix this in a couple of ways um, let's see what well, would be the easiest one to show you guys so you could do like zero measure no problem but because we have so many I think what we can do <laughs> is go to the um, select lasso and with select lasso you can hold control and shift and isolate 
an entire edge loop by clicking on the edge, like so. So that thing goes all the way, let me just check, all the way, all the way to here. That's fine. So I'm going to continue here. So what I'm trying to do, just so you know, is isolate all these bits and pieces, and then we can sort of like weld them together again. Yeah, there's some little weird pieces floating around there. I mean, it's not too bad. Um, so if I undo that, mm, I want to isolate this <laughs> these individually. So uh, I'm gonna isolate this, holding the Alt key. So that sort of thing. Bear with me. This is annoying, but it's just one way to do it. All right, looks like we've we've killed them all. So now we can delete hidden. So delete hidden here uh, for you guys would be under the modify topology. So geometry modify topology delete hidden. So now we don't we have two separate pieces, but then with the C modeler since they are uh, necessarily, like it's not necessarily the same thing, but it is a mirror. So the, the topology on both sides, these two pieces are exactly the same. We have the same points um, and ultimately they're close. So they're like two holes. We could ideally, and hopefully this is work, going to work. We can right click on an edge with a C model, go to close and, oh, sorry, bridge, not close, bridge two holes. And because they, there's the same amount of topology Ideally, if we click here and then click here, it just closes things nicely. Yeah, that's good. Cool, I like it. Um, now I wanna, you know, I don't know if I wanna maintain the 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 polygroups, but if we wanted to, we could just do that um, really quickly, selecting these and then hiding. This this will, this will be a quick manual job but then we will have we will recover the polygroups basically so that's what i'm doing i'm just isolating the pieces i want hiding the ones that i, I don't need right Need to be a little bit careful here. And that way we maintain those nice polygroups that we created. All right, nearly there. Cool. All right, so going back to what we have, we have a clean mesh or a clean topology for those two pieces. Uh, we can continue to refine that. Like so. And yeah, I mean, if we turn on dynamic, it's already like pretty clean anyway, but you know, we can optimize it a tiny bit, maybe g getting rid of some of these loops. So with the edge loop, oh, sorry, with the uh, <laughs> C modeler, right click on an edge, we can do delete the entire edge loop and delete that one. Yeah, I think that that's fine. And then right click on this one, slide, uh, slide the entire edge loop. So slide, slide, slide edge loop complete. And that just clean things up a little bit. You could do the same thing in other um, 
some of those. Oh, this is a weird one. This should be part of this polygroup. Um, so <laughs> you can isolate this, hide this one. I'm getting a little bit too picky with this. But you know, it's all right. I think it's fine. <laughs> Let's move on. So we have this um, this bead. We can you know subdivide it and start adding details. I'm just gonna leave the dynamic on for this, dynamic on for this, and to be able to maintain that crisp edge in the dynamic subdivision, which is in here. This is what I just enabled. Uh, I'm gonna also go to the crisp palette and click on um, crisp PG or crisp polygroups and that crisps all these polygroups. The only one that I might have to do manually is... Oh, what's going on here? What is this? All right, no problem. Let's delete that, the delete hidden. There we go. We don't need to see that. <laughs> um, all right, so right click on an edge. I'm gonna go to Chris, Chris Edge Loop Complete. And I'm gonna crease that entire edge in there. So now dynamic is gonna be that nice crisp edge, but it's just a dynamic, um, a dynamic preview. All right, um, I know this part doesn't look great, but again, it's just a base. Uh, I'm gonna add a lot more complexity in just a second with some other techniques that I wanna show you. In fact, this probably can be a bit thinner so that we can add the thickness with details. All right. Um, okay, so let's focus on this part. Uh, see, we can do some of the straps and make it look more interesting. And let me check if there's any questions. Uh, trim dynamic, uh, yep, I'm not sure at what point you suggested that, but definitely <laughs> you could. Um, the curve points on the end of the guard could be animal feet and animal heads. Uh, the curve point at the end, oh yeah, like in the details, that would be cool. Like as a, kind of like an ornament. Cool. Alrighty. Um, do do I have a? Yeah, I have a YouTube channel. Uh, let me just share it with you guys. I'm actually working on a on a cool tutorial for YouTube. Um, that for my channel that is a building an iris with a um, with fiber mesh. All right, let me see. This is the one. Just so you know. Um okay, so let's do let's do something for the straps. Maybe like um yeah, something with this. Um but before I get into that, I just I don't know. I I feel like I should fix this. <laughs> a bit more make it more like a thick piece all right All right, let's go and work on this guy. Um, this is gonna be pretty cool. So in fact, let's turn on or add a little bit more of Dynamesh resolution. 
and I'm gonna I'm gonna use the um, radial symmetry. So enabling symmetry on the y axis. So in the yeah the vertical axis, and click on R. Uh, all of this is in the transform palette, by the way. So uh, activate symmetry on the y axis, and then radial symmetry, and then the radial count is how many. Um, instances of the brush that you have selected are you going to be using. So I'm going to enable or change that to maybe 16. And if I hover over this, you'll see it has this, all these points. So uh, what's cool about this, let's select the, the damp standard brush, right? With a smaller brush size. I can do this type of stuff really quickly. Maybe 8, not 16. Yeah, right? So I can start defining the details of this of this mesh. Now, this is going to be the base, and maybe we can do the wraps on top. So, if I do all of these, let's say a bunch of details, and then I decide to um, do a Siri mesher, then Siri is going to try to, you know, give me all these details. But I think it's like an over overkill. So, um, in fact, I'm just going to change this and and do like a manually create this again with a clean topology and then subdivision to um, add the details. So I'm going to append a cylinder. Scale that. So roughly the same place. Um, we can hide the other bit now and let's fix this one so what I'm gonna do first just to maintain this um, nice consistent spacing is delete all of this so right click with the C modeler um, go to delete edge loop complete so I'm gonna delete all of the edge loops and then I'm gonna recreate them again but this time will be consistent. So I want to right click on an edge, go to um, insert. So that's going to insert edge loops. And I want to select multiple edge loops. So now I can click and then drag up and try to create like cubes or not cubes, but square pieces. That's fine. Uh, I'm going to right click here and then do the same thing for the inside. But with less. There we go. And the cool thing about the CD modeler as well is that it would remember the latest option. So in here, I just need to click once and it will have the same amount as I did for the top. And that's about it, really. I'm going to hold Control and W to assign a single polygroup again. Go back to what we have. So this is not a dynamesh anymore because it's going to be relatively clean, just add some details or sculpted details. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and just divide this actually. Mm. Yeah, I'm thinking that we could divide this and just add details, or we can actually create those details with a C modeler. Mm, let me think about it. <laughs> because yeah, if it is, if it's gonna have too many details, um, then when we add the straps, it's kind of like pointless. <laughs> so um, I think we can, before dividing this, we can use the C modeler to do something more interesting. Um, so what I'll do is I'm going to right click an edge and I'm going to go to the polygroup cell, um, action. So this is, is, this is to create polygroups and I'm just going to click and that will create a polygroup there. So that's the idea. So I'm going to, you could do the same thing by selecting a polygroup or a loop with the select lasso and then inverting and then control W and then come back and it will create it. But with this, with the C modeler, it's a lot faster. Um, and I can say, okay, give me one polygroup there. And then I can skip a couple and say, give me two there, two there, and that sort of thing. So it's a bit of a manual process, but you know, you have a lot more control. And I'm, I'm gonna add in the same the same polygroup. But you could, if you want, when you click and hold, 
let's say in this area I want a different polygroup, like this whole thing. So I can click and then hold the Alt key before releasing, and that's gonna give me a brand new polygroup, so that I can do you know something different. I'll do the same thing here, right? Um, and then just for the sake of keeping this separate, I'm gonna isolate it. This is gonna be one single polygroup, just the normal Control W. Control W. Alrighty. So uh, with this, I'm gonna use the C modeler to right click on a face, make sure Q mesh is selected, uh, or actually it could be just extrude, it doesn't have to be Q mesh. Uh, extrude polygroup all. So it's gonna extrude all the polygroups, or the same polygroup basically. So I can take this green one at the bottom, get a, give it a bit of thickness. And then as I as I push this out, I'm gonna press the Alt key just to give it a, a different polygroup, just in case. Now, yep, that works. Um, and then I'm gonna take all the pink ones or purple ones and do the same thing. So it's gonna do it at the same time. All right, so that's gonna give me that interesting shape. And then I can do um, another set of details in between, like in this. Um, yellow one. So I'm going to right click, I'm going to go to bevel, and I'm going to click and drag. So this bevel is going to give me yet another polygroup, which is cool, and it's going to be the same thing, well, not in this case, but it's going to same be the same um, distance, the same beveling amount for all these pieces, it's just going to be a different polygroup. But that's not a big deal, we can hide it, we can hide everything but this. Control W to assign a different polygroup now, and then with the C modeler, we can click and extrude this again, right? Or we can click and as I drag this, I'm gonna press the Shift key to simply scale this up. So that's gonna give me this sort of bulging, kind of like inflate effect, which is fine. Um, and then if I turn this into dynam uh, dynamic subdivision, we'll have this cool effect. I think it's cool. I mean, for very little effort, it's all ready to go, and then we can wrap things around. Um, so what's cool about this idea, if you keep things simple when you're doing the blocking, so we have um, these lines going like this, then we can generate some nice contrast by adding some, not that, that many, but some straps going around like in this fashion. And maybe the the strap is something that it will be done by the character or something, so they're not they don't have to be perfect. Um, you know, we could do something like they even go over this area or something. I don't know. We'll see. Um, but yeah, that that's that's the idea. So before doing the straps, so that we can take into account any additional volumes that we do for the for this handle, um, let's go ahead and do that. And then we come back to this. So let's do a quick save just in case. I'm gonna push this guy up a bit. Uh, and this one actually we can have some fun with this actually with the uh, radial symmetry. So let's do that. So this is a dynamic object. So we can do, you know, something like this. Maybe increase the dynamic resolution. Oops, a lot more than that. And then I'm gonna use the damp standard brush, or actually, I'm gonna use the HI Geiger cutter. It's kind of like my preferred um, custom cutting brush. But you know, having the the ability of just working with radial symmetry just makes makes it so much easier. Um, one thing I will do, like I can keep doing this as in increasing the dynamic resolution, but you see I'm already in 1000. So if I click on this icon here, this is to change um, the way that ZBrush determines the resolution. So I can right click now. 
maybe a bit more. Yeah, so now I have lots more. Because it's going to be based on the size. So maybe I went too far. So I have 400,000. <clears> yeah, I went too far. <laughs> All right, that's a bit better. Let's just polish this whole thing. Um, and I'm also going to use the Smooth Stronger that comes with ZBrush, just to smooth all of this a bit faster. And then, yeah, let's play around with this. So. All right, um, guys, if you have questions about all of this process or anything you want related to the process or not, uh, feel free to put it in the chat. I'll, I'll have a look in a second. You can see there's some activity, but um, yeah, just give me one second. So this is where I start, you know, thinking about some kind of like ornament pieces. And with the damp standard brush, if I invert the effect, so pressing the Alt key, I can sharpen some some lines like that. So this is probably one of the most, you know, the really fun processes when designing, when you're using radial symmetry to do this type of stuff. Just, there is a, I don't know, there's, there's like some kind of balance that you always get when you, when you use symmetry. All right, um, you can also use the trim dynamic just to polish certain areas. All the brushes work with radial symmetry. So you can use anything that um, you're familiar with. So let's say in this area right here, you could um, you could polish it with the edge polish, or you can add maybe a little bit more clay just to add volume in that section. And then in this one, kind of like invert the effect, so you can push in with the Alt key. And maybe add more here as well. All right, but that's just such a tiny detail, but it's kind of like an important one. Um, I'm going to use the damp standard brush and holding Alt, just polish these edges so that it feels like it's grabbing onto the end of the handle or the, the beginning of the handle. And that's it. All right, I think I'm kind of happy with this as as it is right now. Um, we can do the the ornaments for the for this bit of the handle, um, and then the straps. And yeah, see where see oh geez, we have only twenty minutes left. All right, we'll move a little bit faster. Uh, let's see the chat. <clears throat> do you know any of any issues with using ZBrush on a 4K screen? Uh, nope. I'm using a 4K screen, but I have it turned off because of other tools, not because of ZBrush. So um, sometimes when I'm when I'm switching between, I use a lot of different software. So when I'm switching between some tools, some of them are not optimized, and it, it just it's very hard to pick things. Um, yeah. So I just turn it off. Um, I don't see why there's any issue but it is optimized zero is optimized for 4k screens anyway it's just like the issue comes with when you switch between different apps constantly which that's what happens to me um 
Uh, no worries. Glad that you find these useful. Um, yeah, so that, again, that little circle here on the Dynamesh resolution is just, if you turn it off, is going to be based on the size. So it's going to give you the best, uh, an optimal resolution of Dynamesh based on the current size of your subtool so that you don't have to go to crazy numbers to increase the resolution. Um, yes, yeah, so that's pretty cool. All righty. So um, to continue with the kind of like organic, uh, yeah, the organic sort of flow of details, what I'll do is let's clean this up very quickly. So I'm going to take all of these pieces that I can use later if I want to do more variations of the sword. And, and have, you know, I can convert it into an IMM brush and then it will be an, uh, an IMM brush of swords that I can use in all products and all, pro all projects. Um, all right, so that's it. Clean that up. Uh, let's go ahead and append a cube or it doesn't matter. Again, this is going to be a dummy file for the details. So I'm going to go into transparency and just leave that there. Okay, um, maybe add a kind of like a orange red color to it so that I know in here what it is. Um, and then I'm going to use this as a dummy. And when I, if in case you are new to the stream or you haven't, you know, follow some of these live streams, I use this often, uh, same thing as with the OR folder. Uh, but this is a dummy object that you won't see. That's why I put it right in the center. And then at the end, I'm going to delete it. But having this as, as an object, as a separate subtool, allows me to add things with IMM brushes to any part of the model. Um, and that way I can keep the other ones clean. Uh, I would be able to do the same thing with any of those. But if I have, for instance, subdivision level, you cannot add IMM brushes or curve brushes into things that have subdivision level. So that's why using an IMM, uh, sorry, an, a dummy file like this kind of like works. Um, the the circle is a new feature. It's not in my UI. Uh, you you will find that in. Uh, let me give you an example of other stuff that you can do with that those type of circles. So if you go to the the formation palette, a lot of the sliders there have the circle that circle thingy, right? So if I use the polish, it's going to look at the difference between circle on and circle off. So I'm gonna do polish. 100% with uh, the circle on. This is what I get. I'm going to do a shift S there and undo. And then I'm going to turn this on and do polish. Uh, this one with this off, it's going to try to f maintain this a little bit. It's not visible there. <laughs> That's probably not the best option. Um, maybe features. Yeah. Features is a little bit more evident what it does. So I'll do polish by features with the dot on. That's what we get. Shift S, undo, and you'll see when it's off, it's a lot stronger. So I can do that and look at the difference. It's almost like, yeah, <laughs> like sharpening the, the difference between polygraphs. So this one, when, when it's off or when it's, uh, when it's empty, basically, that's uh, it's going to be a lot stronger. So that's what I did with the Dynamesh is increasing the strength of like the resolution in that case. Um, so, yeah, uh, that's why by default, I think this is the default of the polish is always really strong, but you can tweak it. If you click on that, make it a bit um, subtle. Anyway, let's do the ornaments. So we have the we have this selected as our mesh uh, we can also enable dynamic subdivision right um, I have some brushes here that I use sometimes or well, thought I did I had a, I had a couple of ornament brushes hmm oh here so this is a brush I made uh, for the 3d snippets I think that it gives me this let's turn off dynamic so you can see it 
So it gives me like this sharp edge corner thing. Uh, it's a really simple brush, uh, but it's useful. It has like tapering and all of that. So I can use that, maybe push that in a little bit to create the ornaments uh, of this. So let's start from here and I'm gonna use it just with the X axis. I'm gonna start with the basic one. And the cool thing is that because this is a brush, uh, a, a curve brush, you know, I can do this type of stuff. As in, you know, let's go back. And if I like it, or if I don't like it, I can just click on it and then smooth that curve with the shift key, right? I can move that around. I can increase the thickness, so I can just increase the brush size, click on it, and it will update automatically. So yeah, this is a pretty simple way of designing this type of stuff. Um, so I think I like that. Uh, once I'm happy, I'm just gonna click somewhere else. Right, and that sort of locks that in. And I can keep doing the same thing. So I'll, I'll like to spend some time here <laughs> playing around with ideas. Um, and also think about, you know, that this once we mirror it to the other side is going to be it's going to add complexity. Uh, there's another thing you can do. So you saw. Let me let me try to replicate that. So that looks kind of cool. But if I go ahead and try to edit that, oops. You see how it just moves and, and turns around? Uh, let me undo that. You can just get rid of that by, like in, in all brushes that use curves. So I'm gonna use the stroke. And in the stroke palette, I'm gonna go to curve, right? And I'm gonna go to curve functions. So here I have the snap. So the snap means that when I move around, Cirrus tries to take whatever I I have in there and it's going to try to snap it to the different surfaces that's why it just goes all crazy if I click this off I can just push this and it's going to ignore the topology or the volumes underneath and that's you know to edit this I think that's a lot easier um, but then I'll I'll add it again so that it snaps properly but Now, this uh, when I get closer to the center, it automatically snaps. Um, you can tweak that as well from the modifiers, I think. Um, the snap distance, I think it's that one. So snap distance set to one. Let's see if that fi fixes. No, I don't think it's that one, <laughs> to be honest. Um, but, you know, if, if you cannot find the setting, I can't remember where it is, you can totally fix that, but I can't remember where it is. If you cannot do that, you can just work on one side and then just mirror and weld it and that's probably good enough. <laughs> so turning symmetry off, we could just work on one side. And that way we don't have that snapping issue. But there's a way to, to fix it, I just can't remember where it is. Um, and I'm not gonna let it <laughs> stop me from keep, um, working on this. And let's go a little bit crazy here with this.
And the cool thing of using this type of brushes is that what I'm adding in terms of topology is actually pretty pretty clean. Another thing you can do is lock start and lock end in this case, so that you can, you know, when you move this, um, and you would have you have to also then end and then start, so you can basically lock in the start and the end, and then just work on the on the curvature. Hopefully that makes sense. So yeah, this is kind of like a lot of fun to to play with. All right, so it's starting to look more interesting, more like fantasy stuff. Um, let me see the. We still have ten minutes. I reckon we can do the straps. Um, if not, we you know we can leave this one for the next stream. Uh, I think it will be a, f a couple of weeks or a week before the end of the. Um, the end of the challenge, so you still have time. But yeah, let me. Um, where can you get the decal sharp tool you're using? In the next lecture. Um, so, like I said, this one is a pretty simple brush to do. Um, it's just a, an IMM that I turn into a curve brush. Um, if you're interested in doing like high quality acid, like I said, and all sorts of custom brushes, not necessarily this one, there's no like a particular acid that we focus on. We do a lot of different ones in the acid library workshop. I'll be happy to share with you guys the the link and you can you can enroll. Uh, but it's not just this. I mean, in the in that workshop, in that course, we do lots of different things. We do um you know, materials, PBR materials, all sorts of really cool, cool stuff for your projects. Um, and the focus is not to do like a specific thing. Like it's not, oh, in this course, we're going to do swords. It's like just literally giving you the workflow so that you can do whatever you want. Um, uh, what I'll do is I'll share the link. So if you go to the 3D Concept Artist website, um, you'll see it's right at the top. There's a link to it, um, and then you can just, yeah, just join. Let me show you what that is. Oh, my internet is not great at the moment. Here we go. Um, yeah. So if you go to the three concept artists, you can scroll. Is this one right here, the Asset Library Workshop, or you can click on this um, ribbon. And there's still time for uh, this. I'm, pr I'm preparing a live workshop just to answer questions like a Q&A for the students. Um, so the first 50 students that get this, uh, you know, get access to that kind of like bonus. So if you're interested, you can just do that as well, like join now and um, you will be part of the of this cohort where there's going to be a Q&A. And you can watch like an, a quick overview video to explain what the whole thing is. Um, but yeah, we do all sorts of things. So advanced sculpting brushes, details, alphas, PBR materials from photos, uh, smart materials, zeroge matcaps, so with lighting scenarios, we do lots of different things, uh, but it's about the process and about the, the workflow, how you can repurpose everything and get into that sort of like frame, frame set or like this um, yeah, frame of mind really to create things for yourself, for your projects. Um, so you end up with your own library of assets that you actually work. Because one of the reasons I created this course is because I I have like a terabytes of assets that I've purchased, that I uh, downloaded, that I found online. So I had a pretty big library, but from that library, I don't use more than 10, 5%, just because maybe I bought something for a specific project that I needed, but then I don't use it anymore. Whereas the process in this workshop is more about building things that you know you're going to need uh, and you do that based on your own projects. So that's that's the whole purpose. Um, yeah, so I'll, I'll put a link here in case you want to check it out. Um, but it's available now, so you can just join us. Uh, there There is also some private channels or like um, dedicated channels for people that join this course in the in the Discord. 
So you can also join and then go to Discord channel and ask for for access. All right, let's um let's continue with this. And I'm not paying too much attention about the intersections in here and how this ends in like this sort of cut piece because I'll update, I'll change that. Um, I'll change that later. That's an easy fix. Okay, I think I'm getting to a point that I'm happy with these sort of details, maybe something around here as well. And then we can move on to other set of details that I think are also, I mean, with the same idea, with the same sort of brush. Okay, so let's clear the mask, go into solo mode. There is the dummy that I mentioned. I'm gonna hold control and shift and hide this whole thing. Delete hidden. And before I mirror, I mirror and weld, I just wanna, just wanna do a couple of things with this. Um, I think based on the normals, I'm not sure if this is gonna work, but based on the normals, I think we can Go ahead and do order groups and go to the normals in the polygroup, not the normal, sorry, the polygroup panel or palette, polypin, not polygroups. And based on the normals, we can say group by normals, maybe change the angle a little bit more. There we go. So uh, an angle for me worked, an angle of 18, that basically changes or gives me polygroups based on the, yeah, on the angles of these things. So that is useful because now we can turn on dynamic. That gives me this very smooth shape. And then in the dynamic palette, or not in the dynamic, in the creasing, I can click on crease polygroups and that sharpens everything based on those polygroups. So that's, you know, pretty easy thing to do. Um, so now, yeah, now I know that it, this works. So I can go ahead and mirror and weld in the x axis that's good and then also mirror and weld on the z axis so oops first let's mirror z and then mirror and weld on z so now we have this interesting cool details all around and of course now we can just go ahead and use dynamic and tweak all of those things so let's add a blue color so that you guys can see exactly what I'm doing and what I'm manipulating. I'm going to use the uh, move topological with AccuCurve and that's going to be in the X and the Z axis so I can, you know, move those pieces like that and that allows me to do um, this sort of like negative space that I think looks pretty cool. So let's try that. Just to create a bit of that sort of gap um, and that's what I told you about like it's the same brush really but it's um yeah um, al al allows us to play around with extra details with what we have <laughs> in a way so i'm gonna use 
this brush to push in the ends and that basically gets rid of that um, cube yeah something like this I guess at this point even though these are details I mean I would say we're still kind of like blocking in the design and deciding how things are going to look but these are details that we can already play with um, that should be should be good to go Uh, where can you find dynamic? That's on the ge geometry palette. Dynamic subdivision, dynamic. Um, the other cool thing is that because we have uh, polygroups now in the areas that that we want, we could just you know sort of sort of like destroy things a little bit, but it doesn't really matter because we use something like polished by um, polished by features, and then we should be able to recover that sharpness and that clean line. Um, also, the reason I'm using the, the move topological is because it respects the topology and the, the polygroups. So, well, not the polygroups, but the, the topology that we have. So, that's why I can move things around relatively easily without affecting the rest. All right, I think we're getting there and we are, yeah, we're, it's time to wrap it up actually. We will leave this as it is and then we'll do the, the straps and clean everything and maybe do some sculpting at damage, do some alphas for damage and all of that in the next stream. So yeah, I'm gonna wrap it up here guys. Just wanna make sure this, can leave it on a, a semi polish note so as you can see i think those sort of like um empty spaces or or playing with the with the empty space and um those gaps it sort of helps quite a bit with the with the design but just i don't want to overdo it Alrighty. I think we are good to go. Some pretty cool ideas, I think, coming from this. That they also should give you some ideas for your own projects as well. And hopefully for that um for that challenge. And we're gonna try to make the um the art challenges in Discord uh, a monthly thing so I hope to see you guys in there um, sharing ideas all right I think that is it for me today but that looks all right let's go ahead and turn off polypaint yeah might have to you know once we add you know textures or colors that look that will look a little bit better. We still need to add some some more stuff like this way. Uh, but we'll do that next next stream with other techniques that I'm going to show you, and then we do the straps like that. Um, 
and then add a little bit of damage and all that good stuff with details. So we can do that later. Uh, but yeah, hopefully that gives you an idea of how to <laughs> how to create a fantasy sword, split sword slash um, lightsaber energy magic thing. Uh, cool. Alrighty. So, um, Jacob, how do I get the thumbnail on the left? Um, I just turn it on here. You can do the pref go to preferences, and at the bottom, you can click on thumbnail. I explain how to set it into transparency and all of that in at the beginning of the stream. So just uh, scroll back a um, bit, and then you'll see how I set it up. Um, yeah. So I'm gonna leave it here, guys. Uh, make sure that you check the Discord. I'll send a link in case you want to join. So the invitation, this is the link, the invite link. So you can click on that and join the Discord server. Um, you will see once you accept the, you know, the rules and all of that, you will see some channels that says our challenge and you'll find all the stuff that I, that I mentioned about the source of Discord. The reason why we're doing <laughs> some kind of like, you know, sort of like this, I might take this concept that I did uh, as a demo and replace the sword with the one that we did today. Um, and in the coming days, I'm not, I'm not sure when, I'm gonna be doing another live session for the Discord uh, just about this challenge. So I'm just gonna do a, a few more tips and tricks on you know how to set things up, uh, maybe some lighting tips like this, um, but that's gonna be on the, on the Discord. So make sure that you join. Um, and yeah, if you have any questions about the, um, the asset library workshop or anything like that, you can also ask me through the Discord. Um, and there's there's heaps of people there as well, and some of the students that have completed that, don't, doing like some really cool resources um, that you can yeah you can ask as well in there. All right, so I'll leave it here, guys, and I will see you in a couple of weeks.